Welcome to the shop. Today we're going to skip right over the beginner stuff. We're going to breeze on by the intermediate and we're going to focus on some of that advanced stuff like TIG welding, ink and L pipe. Now why it's not always the welder's responsibility to know everything about what they're welding on, I always think it's valuable. Inconel 600 is kind of the original Inconel that came out with. And the big things to take away from Inconel, just like any steel, stainless steel, alloyed steel, it's sprinkled with all these different alloys and to give it the characteristics that it has. For example, Inconel has got the highest in nickel and chrome content that you're gonna find, especially nickel, mostly nickel. And when we get to welding this stuff, you're gonna see that puddle. It's gonna look completely different than what you're used to for carbon steel, even way worse than welding with 70S2. It looks like you're smearing toothpaste around. You can't see your edges it's just a strange puddle to stare at and that's going to be because of all that nickel in there but all that nickel and all that chrome give it its characteristics of high strength and toughness extreme corrosion resistance great for high temp surfaces and its abrasion resistance that's why ink and L is so important you're going to find these in your furnace tubes where things get really elevated in temperatures where things have crazy chemicals and things you're going to see a different smelty mix of things in order to get different alloys of ink and L, but mostly you're going to see this high nickel and high chrome content. To give you some perspective, austenitic stainless steel is 18% chrome and 8% nickel, roughly. What we're gonna be doing today is welding on carbon steel with Inconel wire and welding on Inconel with Inconel wire. For the carbon steel, we're gonna be using NICR-3, nickel chrome-3, great for 600 and 601 series to themselves or to carbon steel. And we'll get talking about that later. We're also gonna follow it up with welding an ink and L pipe. This is gonna be closest to about that 690 where we're gonna have a lot of nickel, 45% nickel and 35% chrome in this furnace tube that we're gonna end up welding. So we're gonna have some filler metal that is good enough to match it. You can't find this stuff just laying around at your metal supply, so we gotta go to Republic Testing Labs, go get us some. Now ink and L is not one of those things that you can just find at your local metal supply. Gotta love a cold start. We gotta run down to Republic Testing Labs where they get sell coupons and uh, I bet they'll have some ink and L. If you don't know what Republic Testing Labs is, that's all good. They will test welders, qualified procedures, qualified welders. They also, in the meantime, will have a bunch of coupons on hand for all different types of industries, especially around here in Houston. I've taken a few tests here at Republic myself. Always good people here at Republic and always got a nice parking lot full of welders to test. We got some folks over here doing some pipeline testing with the rig trucks. And then inside you'll have the single hand guys. We got hooked up with some Inconel coupons. We even got some carbon coupons. I'll tell you why we got those here in a second. We got plenty of uh, filler metal to go. Ooh, dang, got plenty of it. Heavy box. We even got us a new little welding shirt. Mm. That's snazzy, snazzy. Shout out to Juevenal. Dip dig, let's go weld something. Now I've already taken the liberty in welding one of these coupons out. Went ahead and took it and purged it. If you got at least two and a half percent chrome, you're gonna have to purge the material. So we're using Inconel filler, that Inconel 82, which is good to weld on 600 and 601 series Inconel, as well as welding on carbon steel. If you have to take this test, a lot of companies will opt to weld it on carbon steel because it'll still give you the same certification. If they get picky, they're gonna opt into actually using the ink and L-based material that we're gonna weld on today. We know it's got chrome in it, so we've gotta purge it. We've gotta get the inside full of argon so we don't get any kind of sugar or atmosphere contamination on the backside. I did get a little heavy on the root pass. We're gonna fine tune our amperage on this ink and L pipe as well as putting that hot pass in, fill passes in. I think I got a little heavy on the final fill before I capped it because my cap looks a little heavy. This puddle is a little bit more stubborn to move around. It doesn't always listen. So we're gonna be talking about that today. The setup today is with the Lincoln Sprinter 180SI. Really been enjoying this machine. We're tigging everything all the way out. It's got its lift capabilities. We don't need to run a foot pedal with it. I'm using this standard 17 torch with your jumbo gas lens and jumbo cup setup. This is pretty much my go-to type setup. Really light, flexible hose along with it. This comes with the Sprinter if you buy the TIG pack with it. And we're gonna be using some 1 8 E3 tungsten from Abacor Benzel. You can pick those up at your local distribution shop along with Abacor Benzel consumables for your TIG torch. If you're about to take this weld test, just know it could be on carbon steel. We're gonna be using these similar filler metals. We'll get into it. First, we're gonna start with fit up. Get suited up, got my trusty Caymans on, get my outlaw hood on. I might switch lenses from this auto dark into a fixed shade. Uh, just because I really want the best clarity that I can have. We're going to start with the fit up here. I've got some 
eighth inch wire I'm gonna use first for the fit. And what I'm gonna do is push that eighth inch wire and jam it up. I want enough wiggle room. I'm actually looking for closer to a 3 16 gap. I'm not gonna treat this much different than actually doing like a stainless steel weld test. You don't need to have anything purged. What we're gonna do is what's called bridge tacking. We're gonna tack one side, put a little bit of meat on one side, and then we're gonna move to the other side and put a little bit over there, and then eventually we'll be able to get all the way across. The point to this is I don't have to purge my tacks, as well as being able to cut these out fairly easy when I get ready to cut these tacks out. So I put kind of a little bead about halfway up the bevel on both sides until I can get enough to just shove some wire and bridge it across. Now if you have to, I recommend running a little bit cooler than maybe this 98 amps which is what we're probably going to put the root in at but i got my bridge tack in i got this little piece of angle iron to hold the high low out it's got a lot of wiggle room in there i'm going to put another tack on the opposite side i'm going to make sure that that gap is plenty wide if i've got a little bit wider of a gap i think that's okay i'm going to get a little bit better of an arc shot for you guys so you can see this like i said we're going to run this little bead little lay wire bead halfway up the bevel edge Try to do the same thing over here. Got an awkward wire angle because the camera's in my way. But it's okay. I just don't want I don't want that that weld to fall into my where I'm gonna put that root. It'll have some sugar, it'll be not a good tack. This doesn't have to be pretty, we're gonna remove it anyway. But it needs to be at least solid enough not to fall apart. Now I'm aware every welder has a method behind how they do their fit ups. I'm only going to put two tacks on this as far as this being, you know, three inch pipe, smaller bore pipe. I'm only going to put the two tacks on there. I've got one side that's just a, just a skosh wider than the, than the other. I'm going to actually going to leave those tacks on the side, leaving my bottom and my tops open. And I'll explain that here in a second. If you find it hard to tack by yourself, just go ahead and turn your machine up to as hot as it goes or 200 some odd amps. You got a lot of thick metal here. All we're going to do is just autogenously weld one to the other. Just so we have something to weld off of and get our pipe in that 6G-ish position. That 45, that'll do. It's good enough for me, good enough for you. And you always kind of want to get that dry run in there, right? Make sure that your coupon's where you like it. I like my coupon to be in the batter's strike zone. So if I was up to bat in the MLB, I'm right here. That's a little bit high of a pitch, but it's still in my strike zone, and that's why I like to keep my coupon. 5G and 6G in the strike zone. Outside of that, let's go outside, get our purge set up, and get everything taped up now. All we're gonna do is take this painter's tape. You can use a lot of different types of tapes. This is all I had laying around. And if you're practicing for an Inco test, all I might recommend you do is buy some carbon steel coupons and buy the, uh, the wire. So you don't have to go get this Inconel pipe in order to practice. You don't need fancy tape to practice. You just need some way to keep the argon in. And this painter's tape is not the best. I like to just do a bunch of it across the top and then I'll put a ring around the top. Same thing around the bottom so when it does get hot, I can kind of just remove it like a little cup. We gotta tape everything up, make sure there's no gaps, nowhere for this argon to go and only to flow. We're gonna put the hose down here at the bottom, wrap it around my pole, the reason being so I, the weight of the hose doesn't make the hose fall out. And make sure that argon has nowhere else to go but in the pipe tedious process I say more tape better it's nice to leave a little window with maybe a uh, welding lens in the top so that you could check your progress without without having to take the tape off now for the weld joint I always like to tape almost at bottom all the way around and past if you had a wider piece of tape you won't need to do two might as well even run one right up the middle again let's go turn on the argon we're gonna run around like 10 CFH for like, I don't know, five, six minutes, go get a drink of water, come back and put a root in it. One thing you should always do before you start welding with the purge, you notice we've got everything taped up. We've started filling with argon. 
we're going to put a hole in the highest point of this weld joint. Just one is all we need. We just need a place for that argon to vent and relieve pressure. And now you can start to put your hand over it and you can actually feel that argon coming out. We'll give it a, a, a minute or so. We're only really purging this and probably this. It won't take very long. If you don't put that vent on and you start welding, you really won't see too much of an issue until you get all the way around and then you, weld, you close your weld up and it spits it back at you because you don't have anywhere for it to vent. You can leave it without the vent hole to put the root in at first because you have plenty of room to open once you start opening up your tape. But just make sure you get that vent in there before you finish that root pass. And you don't need a lot of pressure. You only need like five to 10 CFH in there because you're just trying to hold it back there. You're not trying to put pressure on. If you have too much pressure inside, your root's gonna be flat or it's gonna flutter a little bit. Call it a little dancey dance. Now that we're giving it plenty of time, we can get our hood and gloves back on. Try putting this bead in. Okay, so I've got my machine set to 80. I peeled back that tape all the way to that side tack. So we're gonna go past six o'clock, closer to five. I can feel that argon coming out of there. Make sure I got my gas on. We've got a 332 wire, 80 amps bridge across. Get that first little schmeckle in there. And then we're gonna dip and push a little bit of that filler metal into each dip. And it's important that on that dip, we kind of know we're cold wiring it a little bit. So that's the purpose of pulling that wire out and kind of blending it and pulling it down to that other side so I can make sure that I remove or pull in that cold wire if there is any. Shouldn't be too bad. We freehanded that little bottom, but I think I can get away with a little bit of a walk. And usually if you stop abruptly, you'll get a little fish eye. You can remelt that fish eye just before you introduce any more filler metal. You be sure that you get it nice and molten again and you're feeding into it if you don't feed into it you're gonna get a little low spot i don't treat this any different this root really much different than a stainless root i might be just a tad hotter i got up to that side tack i'm gonna pull off to the bevel edge snap out see that tape not the best for welding it does catch fire okay the reason for me putting my tacks on the side is because I'm actually going to do this bottom first. Looks like it's all clean, no sugar, so that's good. Our purge is working. We're going to get to this other bottom side and do the same thing. The reason why I do my bottom first is because if I do this bottom, I can trap a lot of that argon and keep it from falling out when I start coming up towards the top. Now, the technique on your hard side is no different. It's just on your harder side. We just got to be aware of that. I'm tired of fighting this camera. Just tap to get lit. And again, if you're going to restart, you got to make sure that you remolt in that whole spot. And then you push a little bit of that goodness of that filler metal into that bottom because it's going to want to sit flat. Especially using this smaller 332 wire, you're going to want to feed into that spot towards the back side of that root. And, you know, you don't have to get in a hurry. Just got to make sure you get it in there. Rotate that torch. As I'm coming up the side, freehanding this side. I really like my wide side. If I have my foot up the way I like it, if I have a little wider side, I always keep that on bottom. It just is easier to push a bead in than if your bevels are too tight. But I like tighter edges on the top just because I can still rip it open or we can go about just dipping it a little bit slower and not having to worry about getting a heavy reinforcement. We'll peel this tape back, take a better look on the inside yeah we're good still in there still good now what we're going to do is remove one of these tacks we're going to just remove one i'm going to go ahead and remove this hard side and finish my hard side all the way to the top got that always faithful 3m cubitron three wheel go ahead and clean up those edges and then feather that spot where you stopped and then you're good to go. We gotta still tape up half of this because if we let argon fall out this low point here, then we're screwed. But that's the point of doing the bottom first. And we just used a grinder to cut. That grinder pushes air through that root and it's gonna push air back into that. So we've gotta honestly tape up everything and let it re-purge for just a moment. And give it some time to purge nice and clean and then just get back in there. You might notice with kind of doing this process from bottom to top and doing the bottoms first you might notice that your gaps getting a little tighter 
That's okay, we're just going to keep it keyholed. Don't have to feed as much into our root pass anymore because of gravity. Just dip into one side. I'm using this 332 wire, it's really forgiving. 80 amps seems to be pretty forgiving. Just dipping and pulling, dipping and pulling. And that wire, that tape gets in my way, just peel it back a little bit. Back in. If I notice that keyhole doesn't want to come with me, then I'll, instead of removing the wire after the dip, I'll leave the wire in while I pull the metal down. And that usually gets me out of a bind. If I see that I'm dropping a bead in or I'm not moving, instead of dip pull, it's dip leave. Trying to avoid taking off any tape. I'll show you guys that root pass. No sugar, it's kind of hard to focus on, but it's in there. Put some tape on it again, let it repurge, and finish this sucker. If you're gonna put do feather one spot, always feather that last tie in so when you tie into it, it blends evenly on the inside. One thing nice about it having the last quarter, you don't really need a whole lot of tape, there's nowhere for the argon to go, especially even having it on just the one side of the bottom being done. That argon's being trapped and it's just pouring out the top of the bottom of the weld, if that makes any sense. We're sitting pretty should be able to get all the way up. I really don't mind the ink and L root process. I don't think it's any more difficult than stainless. I don't think it really looks that much more different than stainless. It's kind of watery. It just has this, these little like particles floating around in the weld. And you'll really notice that when you start to doing the fills and the caps. The hardest part of this weld is the cap and seeing your edges. Right now we've got nice bevel edges to follow for the root pass. So it's kind of just really easy to see. I do want to make sure you guys get a nice little arc shot of this last tie-in. Again, we're just kind of dipping the top bevel edge, pulling it down. Gravity is kind of doing the reinforcement for us. When we start getting ready to close up this gap, we feathered this weld that we're running into. Okay, we've got it keyholed. We're going to keep it keyholed to the last hole. I like to kind of try to wet it out all the way around. And then I'll just shove a good chunk of filler right there and I'm just gonna freaking sit on it I'm gonna sit on it you see that puddle elongate get longer that's good we're gonna slowly walk I'm gonna drop this wire slowly walk to the other end to kind of blend it and then I'm gonna what I like to call moon walking and go a little bit backwards just to blend in that top tie-in on the inside and then I'm going to tail and whip out as to not leave a fish eye. So here you can see what? a crack. Yeah, don't do that. The tail out was something that I forgot about. It works really well with stainless steel, but it's very different when it comes to ink and L. You really don't want to dry wash, which means to weld without any filler metal on this type of material. What's gonna end up is you'll crack it. So what I did when I finished that last tie-in, held it on there and then pulled back and tailed over previous weld with no filler. That's what caused the crack. Inconel will do it every time. Your root pass, hot pass fills. Don't dry wash your welds with this process. Carbon steel, no problem. Stainless steel, not a big problem. This, big problem. So we got our bead here on the outside, 6G position. Let's pop a hole in the top here. Yeah, get a better look at this root. Bevel's got a little bit of a transition in them, so kind of hard to see, but everything's in there. We got a little cold wire right there on the top. Let's try to fix it. I don't know if y'all are going to end up seeing anything, but we're going to crank our amps up to 150 something, and we're going to light back up where we know where that cold wire is. Look for it. Look for it. There it is. Suck it back in, and then tail back out. That's what we're looking to do so that we don't leave that spike in there. Ink and L again tends to run a little crummy, especially if you don't keep things clean. So I'll take this cutoff wheel and I'll just kind of. I'm not cut, cutting into anything. I'm just cleaning, just shining up the top. I do this only on my root because sometimes the root is a little bit convex and it stands up high and not in the toes. This blended well, but if you want a nice shiny weld, it helps to weld over something shiny. Not putting a lot of effort into it, just cleaning it a little bit. We'll run a wire wheel through it. 
We don't want to take our tape off for the hot pass. We are going to turn our machine up to close to 185. That should be plenty for our hot pass and a lot of these fills. I'm going to run a 1 8 piece of wire for the hot pass. Really similar to any other butt weld now. Just going to be kind of hard to look at. We got our tape still on there. We still want to purge. If we took our tape off right now, we're going to reheat our root. It'll end up sugaring and it'll fail our weld test. So we're going to keep the tape on. I always keep the tape on all the way out just because it keeps that root looking shiny. Keeping our wire to the top, pulling it to the bottom. That's the method here. Everything looks like it doesn't want to tie in. It wants to be stubborn. That's just this ink and L wanting to tie into the walls. Just how it kind of acts sluggish and chunky but it's well then regardless it's still doing its thing it just doesn't flow like carbon or stainless always pulling up towards our bevels when we terminate so we don't leave that fish eye 180 honestly seems pretty hot i like hot but when i get to the cap we'll probably end up turning it down do our hard side just remembering to keep our head in front of us. That's the biggest thing with doing our hard side. Just keeping your head in front of your tick torch and moving around this piece of pipe. I really don't know how to describe it. The filler melts really easily. It like just, just flows right into your puddle. That's just kind of something that Inconel's good at. Got our hot pass in. You can tell it's hot when you can see the weld wants to pile towards the center here. And it looks kind of V-shaped. That's how you know you're really really hot with the weld which i don't hate uh, we could probably turn things down as we put these fills in and we'll try to get an arc shot i'm going to turn this machine down to 160 150 to do these fills still using this eighth inch wire we're going to get an arc shot don't you worry guys we're going to get that towards the cap where it's a little bit easier to see but i'm just going to fill if you make a pass and wire wheel it if you wire wheel it and then you weld over it, I feel, this is my opinion, that it's easier to get some puddle clarity. Whereas if I don't wire wheel it, and it really didn't need to be wire wheeled, it's just cruddy looking, it's just stacking crud. I'll opt to run a bit of a wire wheel through there. We're going to put a single bead pass right over top of this real quick. You've really got to make sure you tie into everything. It's a little bit chunky and it's hard to see your edges and where you're tying in and under the wire try attempt to carry more metal definitely opt for a kind of a dip technique without taking your wire too far out of the shielding gas comparatively speaking to stainless and carbon i always seem to see those little voids and have to pause a little longer to make sure that they all fuse together again that was a clean well like it didn't nothing was messy about it and it looks shiny. It's just, uh, I still feel like if we welded right over that, it's just gonna be keep getting harder and harder to see. So I think we're ready to cap. You can see how this bead just wants to sag a lot. I think the material is a little too hot right now. Regardless, you can see we're still flush top and bottom. And on the sides, we're flushed out. Not the prettiest thing. We're gonna let the pipe cool off before we cap it and probably cap it a little cooler with some 332 wire to get you guys a little close up. All right, here we go. We're capping it right now around, still around 140, 150. We're using this eighth inch wire still. I don't want to feel my rod feed any wire, but I want to make sure that that puddle is still satisfied with filler and I'm not robbing any base material. Move around this pipe so I could face this weld a lot better. If I stare at it at a weird angle, I can't see where my lines are at because this puddle is just a little, like I guess, kind of difficult to watch. Kind of hard to look at kind of just pick some lines that's why it's important to keep those bevel lines kind of just picking two points and stick them to them sometimes i'll even pull that wire out to help me see that line coming up just not trying to pull it out of my gas too much so all the tape is gone as well once you get towards the cap there's definitely a sufficient amount of metal that you shouldn't have to worry about that tape or it getting in your way you're sticking to nothing or just smelling bad whatever you just don't want it on there for you don't need it really often to take up a lot of room on this bevel oh, dude. 
Lunch is hard to weld with you guys in my way. The biggest thing that I'm trying to look for is just make sure I don't sag this bead too bad. So I'm tapping the top of the puddle with my wire, getting enough metal to pull down, bouncing off that bottom edge, because this wire just seems to want to overlap a little bit more than I'd like. So I'm trying not to carry too much material, but I still need to satisfy that puddle. Looking for my bevel edge, making sure I cross it no more than a sixteenth of an inch. I can see these edges, it's just hard to see when that Inconel puddle has crossed over and has blended in properly. Is the only thing that's kind of bit tricky to see. And that's our bottom bead on the cap. You can see it takes up the majority of our bevel on both sides. But you see where the highest point of that weld is, is low. So we still probably, I'm, I'm going to be able to put it in two. But we're going to carry that same method as far as how we're carrying it. I am going to turn my amperage down, 135. I think I need a little bit of cooler amps. Same wire, same wire size, new tungsten. And again, I always like to give it a little bit of a wire wheel. Because I think that'll help blend everything. We got a cooler amperage so we can kind of have a stickier puddle but we're going to try to move taking that wire and dip in the top pulling down dipping pulling out never coming out of my shielding gas too far definitely think the amperage dropped helped this last bead oh i'm so sweaty pitter patter let's finish this thing some companies might opt for to clean this last little and honestly, this little cleaning strip wheel from 3M was really nice for that. I was able to get that in two beads. The cap's not the prettiest thing I've ever done, but Inconel's not the easiest metal to weld. We've got a little bit of a transition on the pipe where it's beveled, and it kind of gives a weird look to it. The cap's got a decent crown on it. We've got enough bead on it. I don't think it needs another bead. The roots in there are like swimwear. I'm proud of that one. Outside of that, you know, this is what it takes to weld Inconel. I'm sweating my butt off. I've sweat through all my clothes. I hope this helps somebody who might be looking to do this type of test. Don't overthink it. It is very similar to stainless steel. It's just really difficult to watch and to look at and you just got to trust yourself I'm thinking a little colder than I normally like my carbon steel for the fills at least for the cap for sure The fills I'm not too worried about aesthetics, but when it comes out to that cap I might would turn things down This is one of the higher paying types of welds that you can make in the industry This is called a specialty welder and they are making serious coins So I hope this helps somebody and maybe I get me a new job myself. We'll see you guys on the next weld This is what it takes to weld Inconel. I'm sweating my butt off. I've sweat through all my clothes. Hell, dude! What the?